Greetings, everyone. This is Prostodontics on Friday, which addresses various prostodontic steps and implant treatment, the pros, cons, and the side effects. Welcome to Prostodontics on Friday. I'm MC Dr. Jo In Ho. Today's Prostodontics on Friday is the fifth lecture of digital session, and Dr. Hoinshik from Hoinshik Dental Clinic has is here with us. Hello, you've provided digital dentistry lecture at Dental, and thank you for appearing on Prostodontics on Friday. Before we begin, could you briefly explain about your lecture today? I'm a periodontist as well as a private practitioner. Just a couple of years ago, I did not imagine myself giving lecture on prosthodontics with, and not periodontics or implant. And I think this is made possible with a digital technology. Today, I'm going to talk about how inlay crown and bridge is made using digital technology based on scanner. With the today's lecture, I'm, I'm sure it will be meaningful and you'll be able to learn about crown, bridge, and inlay. It's like catching three birds with one stone. For those viewers on the dental site watching this, on the right, you can see the chat screen and you can use it for real-time communication. Feel free to leave your questions and these will be addressed during Q&A session. In order to participate in the chat, you need to join first. If you're a first-timer, join the dental site and agree to marketing to get free Starbucks coffee coupon. Once you participate in the chat during the live lecture, through a lucky draw, you can additionally get coffee coupons through a draw. I look forward to your keen interest. Let's welcome Dr. Hoinshik and listen to his digital session. Today's lecture was digital CBI, crown bridge inlay. And I slightly altered the order of the names, digital inlay, crown and bridge. The reason I changed it is because when we first learn digital technology, the easiest thing we can do is inlay. And once you master inlay, you can do crown and then move on to bridge. That's why I changed the order. Today's lecture is going to address the introduction and then I'm going to talk about the key factors regarding inlay, crown, and bridge. And then I'm going to provide a summary. First of all, introduction. Digital dentistry workflow can be explained as shown. All areas which encompass digital technology once information is input based on the information you make interpretation and based on the interpretation finally the desired output is gained there are three steps as mentioned and what kind of steps are included in digital dentistry information is gained from scanner oral scanner or model scanner Using oral scanner, you can directly scan the desired areas within patient mouth and model scanner, you scan the model. So you can say that a bit of analog is mixed within it. Afterwards, we use CAD or CAM program to interpret. How are we going to design and process the crown? We make interpretations on this and based on it, using 3D printer or 4 or 5 axis machine is the desired outcome is then printed out. Using these processes, final prosthesis is fabricated. What kind of workflow does analog method have? Displayed is the same input 
interpretation and print. Impression and model fabrication leads to input and interpretation is done via lab technicians handwork like wax up and interpretation is put to create the final prosthesis the crown the physical casting or other processes are involved to make processes so i've thought long and hard about how to provide intuitive visual example which compares analog and digital prosthesis on the left is analog dentistry the mortar and on the right is digital dentistry the missile when you look at war movies the scout reports on target position and once this is received the main camp shoots at the target Although coordinates are communicated, in some cases it falls in wrong places like civilian housings. What about sticker missile? It has the ability to hit the target accurately via GPS. I believe digital prosthodontics has that kind of capability. That has been truly enlightening. I have summarized what you should be most aware of in each stages of input interpretation and printing. First, the input stage. Once you do scanning, you need to make sure that scanning has been done correctly. Actually, scanning is correct. You need to make sure that prep is done correctly. Continuous review can be done. Also, at scanning stage, you can check whether there's undercuts. These need to be checked, and then we can move on to the next step. If you think you have done prep correctly and have accurate margin and no undercut and sufficient distance with the antagonist, you can do rendering and interpret information, which is the design process. You can use CAD program to design the crown and based on the interpretation, you can complete the designing phase. In printing stage, you need to consider what color you're going to add to the tooth. You can do it before firing and after coloring. If you want to utilize digital dentistry to the fullest, review what is done clinically. In input stage and in design stage, review what I have designed. And in printing stage, you need to check whether accurate color has been achieved. By doing this, you can get good result using digital dentistry. Let's look at the processes involved in inlay using digital dentistry. There was curious in number six and seven. There was existing resin. Prep was done and scan was done. As you can see in red, prep is quite insufficient. When we take impression using analog methods, these are not shown well. You cannot see the differences clearly using impression materials, but using digital technology after scanning, you can check what is insufficient. You can adjust once again and do rescanning very easily and impeccable preparation is possible. This information is sent to design PC and final design is done. After that, milling is done and inlay is tried in within the oral cavity. You need to check whether the inlay has passive fit. What is important here is there's two methods to mill inlay. First, you can use four axis milling machine and another is to use five axis milling machine. When you use four axis milling machine, you use block. When you do this, the connector is connected here. If the connector is in the contact area, when you do try in, it is very difficult to find the right contact. At times, if the inlay does not have passive fit, it can be caused for fracture, so you need to be very careful. On In the case of 5-axis milling machine, 
you use disk. The problem with this is that the connector is in the occlusal side. This is a problem because it damages the anatomical structure of the occlusal surface. Once a setting is done, this is not just occlusal adjustment, but it's almost as if you recontour the inlay and significant adjustments need to be made. Recently, investment method has been introduced. You process half of inlay first and then Plaster is used for investment once the plaster becomes solid. If you do investment on the other side, you can do inlay milling without connector. By doing this, accurate inlay processing can be done and time required for trying in with an oral cavity is reduced significantly. Finally, resin adhesive is used to set the inlay. And that's it. Can I ask you a question? Based on my understanding, the materials used for inlay is hybrid resin ceramic and zirconia. If so, what is the wear on the antagonist like regarding these two materials and which do you prefer more? I rarely did gold inlay or gold crown. The reason I don't do gold inlay is not only because of crack, but it takes approximately 4 to 5 days until prosthesis comes after impression is taken. The main reason I use hybrid resin ceramic for inlay using digital technology is because I can complete restoration within one hour on the same day. That's why I don't do zirconia inlay and I have summarized the reasons. The total amount of hours required for hybrid resin ceramic inlay is approximately one hour or one hour ten minutes at most. From prep to setting, it takes that much time. But for zirconia inlay, it takes at least two hours, and at maximum, it takes four to eight hours and nine hours if cooling hour is taken into account. This is because it takes time to fire zirconia. When you do hybrid resin ceramic, inlay is attached while the patient is anesthetized, so the patient doesn't really feel discomfort during prep or setting. The biggest issue with inlay is hypersensitivity and this is significantly reduced because the patient is anesthetized while setting is done. And we can't do this for zirconia because of firing time and inlay is set after the patient regains all the senses. It has good aesthetics but in terms of hypersensitivity during setting, it has very little difference with gold inlay. It dampens the advantage of one day practice. Third, in the case of hybrid resin ceramic inlay can be cemented using resin cement. However, in the case of zirconia, there's a lot of controversy over what adhesive should be used. Fourth, in the case of hybrid resin ceramic inlay, once it is attached with cement, it's difficult to differentiate between the borders. In the case of inlay, depending on how you fire it, for example, if you fire with quick sintering mode, there's a high possibility that there will be imbalance amongst the cement, tooth, and inlay. You need to be aware of that. In terms of hybrid resin ceramic inlay, it can adjust the adju occlusion and the shape after treatment easily, but in the case of zirconia inlay, this is not easy. That's why I don't do zirconia inlay and I preferred hybrid resin ceramic inlay. When you do MO inlay or DO inlay, what do you think about the fracture issue? After I first started to use a digital scanning, I did tons of cases, not just MODO and MOD. After one or two year follow-up, there were a lot of cases where fracture occurred. These days, if there is a lot of wear on occlusal surface and if there's limitation in prep amount, 
And if the frame depth is not sufficient, I recommend crown rather than hybrid resin ceramic. I don't do gold inlay, understood. Please carry on with the lecture. Next, I'm going to briefly explain how to fabricate crown using digital techniques. We can use digital scanner and milling to create prosthesis. You can mill ceramic or zirconia. You can mill wax and cast metal to do prosthesis, but I think the best way to utilize digital technology is to use ceramic and zirconia for prosthesis. First, let's look at four axis milling machine using Emacs. This is the workflow using digital dentistry. Oral scanning is done. CAD software is used for design and calculation is done with CAM software. And the block, which is slightly purple, is milled. And firing is done. In the case of ceramic materials like Empress, Strength is slightly lower compared to Emacs, but it does not require centering and you can finish off just with polishing. That's a plus. And third, you can use 4-axis milling machine, but these days a lot of people use 5-axis milling machine. You use a zirconia to fabricate crown, oral scan is done, CAD CAM software is used for design, milling is done. Before firing, coloring is done to give color. And then polishing or staining is done to add even more color. It is afterwards a set like this. Let me show you a recent case in number 36. The crown had a little bit of a problem, so endodontic treatment was done and the crown was provided once again. Prep was done, 3-0 cord was placed to do oral scan. In the past, in analog days, we use 1-0 and use the second cord. And after removing it very quickly, you would scan it. In digital technology, you rarely put in two cords. You just use one. If it is slightly insufficient, you finish off using laser. You either use one cord or don't use it at all to do scanning. Scanning is done. After that, there are a couple of things we need to check. First is whether occlusion has been accurately registered. When you take impression bilaterally before you prep, you need to check whether occlusion has been accurately registered. And second, you need to check whether the distance with antagonist is sufficient. If it is shown in red or orange, the distance with antagonist is close, so additional prep is necessary. If it is yellow or green, sufficient distance is secured, so prep is sufficient. You need to make sure, finally, whether the desired area is accurately scanned. You need to check whether it is covered with gingiva or foreign debris. And after we check all these, final rendering is done and using CAD design program, you can check the shape of adjacent teeth and axis. Crown design is done considering overbite and so forth. Ultimately, you check the designs and look at whether the thickness of material, not just occlusal surface, but mesiodistal and buccolingually, whether it is sufficient or whether over contour is done or not. After that, milling and sintering is done. 
because there's a little bit of limitation with just the centering in terms of providing color staining is done and the crown is done in number 36 unlike the conventional zirconia crown you can see that this is very aesthetic and it has balance with adjacent natural tooth we can see that the mesial pfm prosthesis is quite unesthetic if you use zirconia crown as well as digital technology you can get very aesthetic results Finally, I like to talk about making bridge using digital techniques. Implant has become much more common these days, and cases for bridges have decreased, but implant bridge cases have increased. In number four, number six, number seven, implants were placed. In number five, Pontic was designed. Healing abutments were removed, a scan body was connected, and scanning was done. This is the same you need to check whether occlusion has been registered nicely. If numbers 4, 5, 6, and 7 are missing on one side, at times occlusion is tilted. And if you make prosthesis design, the occlusion of final prosthesis can be too high or too low, so you need to pay special attention whether occlusion has been registered nicely. As shown, check whether merging is done accurately. And finally, abutment and crown bridge has been completed. If you look at the occlusal surface, the shape and size of adjacent teeth have been considered and abutment and crown were designed at the same time. Connector is attached and positioned and design of final prosthesis has been completed. Milling and coloring was done. Finally, after centering, this patient had a unique tooth color, so staining was added. This was how it was done. Customizing abutment is connected and crown is placed. The occlusal point, I tried to make it come to central fossa and it is nicely done. In this case, occlusion was very well done. Occlusal adjustment was barely done and setting was done. This is after completion. If you look at the profile, the shade is very similar to adjacent teeth and I put in a lot of effort to do this. And this was made possible with staining. When we design digital bridge, there's a connector which connects the pontic and retainer. Is there something you need to keep in mind when you design connector? Designing connector is very important because if you make connector too weak, there can be fracture in the joint area and it is also very important aesthetically. Let me talk about this by showing you another case. This case was originally planned for an implant. Although attempts were made to place the implant because the bone quality was very bad and alveolar bone was very thin, yes, it's very thin. And it's so thin that ridge splitting was impossible and I considered doing bone graft and placing implant, but rather than that, I thought it would be more ideal to do conventional bridge and this was explained to the patient. Ridge contouring was done and in order to make keratinized mucosa, soft tissue management was done, prep was done, and scanning was done. Before we do bridge case, we need to check whether path of insertion is made accurately in one direction. In analog prosthesis, the lab technician would do what it takes to make a prosthesis that fits, but in making prosthesis modulus, it's very difficult, so scanning following this path is very important. Temporary crown has been designed like this. It was a long bridge. There was a possibility of occlusion being too high or low. 
I use temporary to check the design. I made temporary crown using PMMA and I looked at it long and hard after setting it, but something didn't really quite click. In doing prosthesis design, if there's no major issue with the crown that has been designed with PMMA, you can just print it out exactly the same using zirconia, but the gingival embrasure space was too tight and oral hygiene was difficult to maintain. The patient should be able to use Proxa brush. The patient had been doing orthodontic treatment for a long time, so there was inflammation. I thought this could be an issue. In number seven, mesially, the size was too big, and number six, it was slightly tilted towards mesial side. So I looked at how the crown was designed and provided feedback. And number seven was slightly more over contoured if you look at the joint the joint was designed like this it was too inferior fortunately the design program called the three shape dental system allows for easy reforming of joint design adjustments can be made easily corrections can be made easy the design that you see is the final correction of the design, gingival embrasure. You can see that Proxa brush can go in. The space has been secured. Number seven has been adjusted mesially so that the crown size looks more appropriate. Number six has been enlarged. Based on my feedback, the joint, which was too inferior, has been raised. When you design joint, the lingual side is not really shown. So in order to supplement the strength, you can make it slightly thicker lingually, but bulkily, if it is protruding too much aesthetically, it can look unnatural. On the buckle side, if possible, you need to make it as if natural teeth are adjoined. The lingual side, you need to add more material so that it can be supplemented. This is occlusal surface. This is the final design. The size and shape of the teeth on the other side has been considered and design was done and printing was done. Thank you for the nice response. Please carry on with your lecture. The inlay crown and bridge. I've talked about these topics. Rather than summarizing, I want to, I want to end my lecture by talking about why we need to utilize digital techniques. I would like to give you three main reasons. What is the biggest benefit of digital dentistry? Regardless of whatever you imagine or whatever you want, regardless of what it is, you can express it aesthetically and functionally. There's limitation involved with manual work, but on CAD CAM, this is possible. The second reason is the reason for the failure or patient's discomfort can be inferred more accurately because we can look at the designed crown and review accurately so we can assess the reason why the prosthesis failed and the patient is experiencing discomfort. In the past, if the patient complains about the prosthesis, sometimes you see dentists saying that this is as good as it gets. You try to convince the patient that it is satisfactory result. However, I realized that there's a quite a good rationale behind such discomfort and complaint. In the analog days, we do not directly design the prosthesis and do wax up, so we cannot do it accurately. But if you actually do it directly, you can understand them more deeply. Finally, when the prosthesis is not really satisfactory, Errors can be corrected quickly and completely. In the analog days, if we wanted to change, we needed to start from scratch. 
from wax up. At times, you need to remake the model and take impression again. In the case of digital dentistry, if prep has been done accurately, you can just slightly adjust where the patient feels discomfort with a couple of clicks, and you can quickly and completely correct the errors. Thank you for listening. This is the end of my lecture. If you have any questions, I will answer them. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Next, Dr. Ho yun let's look at the live Q&A. Heidi Hamburger, Dr. Ho, your voice is really charming. It has been of great help in understanding your lecture. Thank you. I think Hamburger really likes Dr. Ho yun Thank you. I think you need to get a coffee. ID Eunpyeong District Surgery. Thank you for a wonderful lecture, doctor. I think this person is a surgeon because it says so in the ID. I'm ID hot. There are many advantages of digital dentistry, including time and cost. Compared with analog dentistry, what is the biggest advantage or relative advantage compared to analog dentistry? Personally, compared with analog dentistry, digital dentistry does not fall behind in any of the marks. In the beginning, I've talked about analog dentistry as mortar and digital as missile. If you are aware of the accurate target position, and the coordinates, then digital dentistry will be able to help you meet that target most accurately. Yes, accuracy is a huge plus. I think compared with analog, you can reduce time and effort significantly. For example, in the analog dentistry, you need to wait until the stone solidifies, and it can take a lot of time. But with digital dentistry, you can just do scanning and move right on. The amount of work that is required goes down. For example, if the patient loses the prosthesis, because you have the materials, you can restore it very simply. And I think this is a major advantage with digital dentistry that is incomparable with analog dentistry. Personally, through today's lecture, I fear maybe those of you who really love analog dentistry may have felt bad but about themselves. If you have truly mastered the art and science through our analog dentistry, I think if you utilize digital dentistry, such art and science can be realized in a more phenomenal fashion. If you do digital in a half-minded way, really bad prosthesis can come out because analog it comes to us after being processed by a lab technician, so what is lacking clinically can be covered significantly at the lab. In the case of digital and modelless prosthesis, depending on how you do prep and design and who does it, the results can vary significantly. And if you just rush in without being prepared, you may end up with a prosthesis that is completely different from what was discussed. And I would like to emphasize that it should be carefully carried out. Let's take another question from ID Clutch. If you cannot process it directly within the dental clinic, what needs to be emphasized when we make a request to the lab? I would like your word of advice. I think this person also love a coffee coupon. The question is very specific. There's a coffee coupon image up there. 
The reason why I started digital prosthesis was because the prosthesis I got was really below expectation. Now that I have done a lot of lab work, I think I had to a lot to do with the fact that I got such a poor prosthesis because in the beginning I talked about mortar and missile and that accurate coordinates need to be shared and GPS needs to be used to accurately meet the target. In digital dentistry, accurate coordinates and GPS equal to pre-op image. The shape and shade of the tooth that the patient originally had. If you accurately deliver that to the lab, you'd be able to get a perfect prosthesis. Likewise, if you cannot make prosthesis within your dental clinic, you need to provide accurate information so that the lab technician can accurately find the target. And that's not possible based on just the lab request written on paper. The prepped model is not sufficient for the lab to understand how to make the crown and they can only rely on their imagination, therefore good prosthesis cannot come out. You need to take image of the patient's tooth before treatment along with the request to get an impeccable prosthesis. And it's very easy to send over such information, you can use cuttock or other means. Good information leads to good prosthesis, good digital prosthesis. Thank you. Let's entertain one more question. ID456852. How do you respond to fractures of hybrid resin ceramic inlay? This is the question. Out of my cases, about one or two cases per year, they come in because of fracture. And if the patient comes in due to fracture after only one or two years, the patient may complain about it. They complain about the durability of the prosthesis. And as a private practitioner, that's really a bitter pill to swallow. In those cases, I just tell the patient that his or her best K3 force is strong and inlay is insufficient and crown would be a better option. And I convince the patient in that way compared with the past. In the beginning, I mentioned that I used a lot of MOD and MODO. I did a lot of multi-surface inlays and onlays. I don't address it in a complicated manner. If it is multi-surface and extensive, in that case, I just do crown. So that is the know-how that you've gotten as a private practitioner. And I think this is a clinical know-how. Yes, the patient can have good prognosis for a long period of time. Final question. ID Bororong. A lot of people use multi-shade disc. If I use this, does the need for color disappear? There are multi-shade three-layer products available these days. I think the question is around this. When we go shoe shopping, I wear 250 and use check a variety of options. The new shoes may not fit perfectly, but that's okay because you already expected it. And that is the concept for multi-layer disc. The multi-layer shade, multi-layer disc, the shades are set so that it fits the average color and it cannot recreate the different characteristics that different patients have. It is much more aesthetic than the mono color or mono layer and it really reduces the load but you cannot say that it ensures aesthetic results. It's the same with ceramic. If the patient has average standardized color and is better than what the patient used to have, you may use it, but if you really think that aesthetic is important here, I would rather color or stain on monolayer disc. Dr. Ha, thank you for answering the questions live. To the viewers, I would like to extend my appreciation for the participation.
As mentioned earlier, those who participated in the chats here automatically apply for the lucky draw for the coffee coupons, which will be delivered individually. The Q&A session has now ended. In closing, could you please give a word of advice to the viewers and fellow dentists who have stayed late in Friday night to view our program? Can you give us a word of advice and guidance? We would love to hear your opinion. This is the same for all areas, but digital prosthodontics, until you reach a certain level, inevitably you would go through various trial and error. In due time, if you do not repeat your mistakes and overcome the many obstacles, you'd be able to produce many beautiful prostheses once you're at that level. Don't get too stressed over your mistakes, or even if you stumble a little. Enjoy them. Just consider them as different steps in moving forward. You need to study hard, and what I want to say to those who are studying is that Dr. Hall has a program that is airing every Monday. Can you provide us with more information? Basically, it is Digital Dentistry 101. Alpha Omega scans and guides. All of digital dentistry is ad addressed during lunch hour on Mondays. Those of you who are just beginning, I'm sure it will be of great help. Yes, I'm an avid viewer. I watch it while eating lunch. I hope you listen in on digital lecture every Monday and become experts in your area. Dr. Ho, thank you for providing a lecture up until such late hour and coming all the way to Maguk. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. Dear viewers, how did you like the digital session with Dr. Ho in Shik? Digital inlay crown bridge was made more easy and I'm sure you've deepened your understanding on the subject. Thanks to Dr. Ho. The answers that were not addressed during the program will be answered via reply. The next digital session will be done by Dr. Chun Se Young of Digital Hub Dental Clinic under the title Digital Denture. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you.